In the past few weeks, YouTube's algorithms have flooded my feed with all things Channel Awesome related. But I'm not talking about the Nostalgia Critic putting out a new video. I'm talking about small YouTube channels that have built massive careers out of feeding a ever-growing hungry audience for more hot takes and impassioned opinions on the latest internet drama that is the Channel Awesome scandal. The rotting core on Channel Awesome's squeaky clean outside facade. I was originally going to go through this uh, Our Response document released by Channel Awesome where they respond to some of the allegations made in the Channel Not So Awesome Google Doc. I was going to go through it and parse through it and pick out the things that I felt were good responses on Channel Awesome's part and then some of their weaker responses and all that kind of stuff but you know honestly I'm not gonna do that and I'm not gonna do it because this situation has gotten so fucking negative that it is draining all my positivity anytime I think about it doing these videos I because I, I did one like a week ago about my initial reactions to the um, not so awesome Google documents uh, this has taught me a valuable lesson about life. It might sound naive and it might sound facetious on my end, but seriously, I I've learned something about life, or at least about YouTube. Y you get what you put in. I made a video about a dark, um, negative content matter with, with these Google documents and, and all these kind of things that happened, and all I got in the comments section was dark, negative energy. And that is not why I got into making YouTube videos, and that is not what excites me as a content creator. So this is my last video on this topic, and, and I am done. I just felt like I needed to make one final video to kind of bookend um, what, what I started with, with my original video. So since my last video, Channel Awesome released their response to the now 73-page Google Doc. And as I said before, I feel like some of Channel Awesome's responses were legit and did ease my concerns. They provided screen caps of chat logs, video evidence, and document scans to back up most of their claims. Now I have heard these chat logs have been doctored, but from my research, I haven't been able to find any source that can back that up. So I'm assuming that these chat logs are the real deal, and if they are, they definitely do fly in the face of what many of the former content creators were alleging. Probably the most disturbing allegation in the original channel Not So Awesome Google Docs was the anonymous woman who claimed that a former producer sexually abused her. Well, we now know that that former producer was Justin Jew Wario Carmichael. Like I said in the first video, I've only been watching Nostalgia Critic since about 2016, so I've never watched a single video by this guy but I do believe the accusations against him are true. When you look at the timeline at when exactly Justin left that guy with the glasses, it was February 15th, 2013. This corroborates directly with the screen cap where Rob Walker says, do we want to drop blank on Friday, which would have been February 15th. Also, if you look closely to the name that has been redacted, you can see what looks like a J and perhaps the dot of an I. Also, given the spacing, the name Justin fits perfectly here. This isn't very scientific by any means, but everybody has pretty much generally accepted that that's who the sexual offender was, and this only further corroborates that. So, uh, Justin uh, eventually did end up killing himself. And it was supposedly because the dude was, like, really depressed, you know, all that kind of stuff. I can relate, not to the point of suicide, but, like, I can relate to the, the whole mental illness thing. One has to wonder, though, given all these things that have been brought to light, did he kill himself because he was depressed? Or was the dude suffering from a guilty conscience? He needed help, whatever the situation was, and, and he obviously didn't get it at the expense of ruining some people's lives. So, the whole situation is just shit. Uh, you know, this is by far the worst thing in these Google documents. I mean, this, this trumps everything else. You know, the petty, uh, you know, complaints about... 
uh, they're not being snacks on the set of Suburban Nights. Uh, you know, it just makes all that shit look like spilled milk compared to this latest thing that's come out, and it's really depressing, honestly. Since this document's release, there has been a mass exodus of content creators from huge titans like Angry Joe and Linkara all the way down the ring. The last I've counted, 33 content producers are no longer associated with Channel Awesome pretty much as of April. In fact, it's more of a question of who is with Channel Awesome these days. If you go to their website, the show list has nearly collapsed in on itself, with only Guru Larry and Brad Jones still remaining in the drop-down list. There are now even rumors that Doug Walker himself is either leaving Channel Awesome or left Channel Awesome, as his Facebook page says, worked at Channel Awesome instead of works at Channel Awesome. Honestly, this is one of the only ways the Walker Brothers could save face. This brand is pretty badly tarnished at this point. YouTubers can recover from controversies. It happens all the time. Remember when JonTron said some xenophobic shit on a live stream? Remember when PewDiePie dropped the N-word? Remember when Logan Paul filmed a dead body in Japan's suicide forest? Are these YouTubers' careers dead? No, their careers may not be over but they are definitely forever tarnished. From a PR perspective, the smartest thing that the Walker brothers can do at this point, in my opinion, issue an apology, make it heartfelt, disassociate yourself with Channel Awesome and Mike Mashad. The mob has turned against you for better or for worse, for right or for wrong. That's the political minefield that we live in, in this internet age where, you know, information is so widespread and easily accessible and it just, for some reason, people are grouped together and once they've turned on you, they've turned on you. So that would be the best, my, my advice, you know, to them who they would never listen or pay attention to this channel and, and that's fine. Um, so I, I hope that, you know, they can work everything out because at the end of the day, the Nostalgia Critic is a character that, to a lot of people, is still very much loved. I hope that you enjoyed this video, and uh, if not, then I I'm, I'm sorry you feel that way. Um, next week, back to my regular content, not talking about this shit anymore. Have a good rest of your night. <laughs>